Hey gamers. What's up? How's it going? Hope you're having a good Thursday. Uh, it looks, I, I noticed a notification in OBS that I dropped for like five seconds at some point during that countdown. Hopefully that was just random and nothing else happens, but we'll see. At least it makes, it'll probably make my YouTube audience happy that they don't have to skip the entire 10 minutes in my, uh, in my uh, intro. They'll have to skip like 50 seconds forward or whatever. Oh well, what's up? How's it going? Uh, as you can see in the stream title, I would like to report a bug in my deck. So, yeah, we're playing Grist. Uh, this Grist is being played over the Samwise, the one of Samwise that's been in my deck. That's really supposed to be a Scarab Swarm, um, if I was playing in paper. But unfortunately, we still have no clue when we're going to be getting 40k, 40k cards online. Um, but yeah, all right. So, so I'm going to talk about playing yeah it's it's funny one of my friends joked it's a way for me to finally get insect tokens into play even though 40k isn't legal online yet um so i'm going to go through all the reasons that i'm going to try playing grist and there are two very important ones you can get it with recruiter and you can put it into play with vile and both of those things are incredibly cool i am a huge hater of planeswalkers I, my wife got me a birthday cake that said ban all planeswalkers one day or one year for me. Um, I hate, it's the worst card type they've ever made. Um, but those two things together make this probably one of the cooler planeswalkers that you can play. Um, now as for what it actually does, um, two big things one is obviously the minus two as removal can be pretty nice it's sort of an army in a cannon by itself using making the plus ones uh for the insect tokens the insect tokens also are nicely cool are easy fodder to flashback cabal therapies potentially um and yeah i mean grist has seen play in not that many legacy decks but enough of them i think we generally understand what what this card does and that's kind of what I'm looking for in terms of playing it in this is, you know, you can recruit for it, you can vial it in, um, and specifically, it does pretty good with therapy to have an easy token maker. As for the reasons, I'm a little skeptical, but we'll see how it goes is, first of all, the reason I hadn't played it in the first, in the first place, um, it's because we only have one actual green source in the deck, and I don't really think we have room for any more than that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and that means it can be kind of tough to actually cast this card in any matchup where your opponent has Wasteland. The nice thing about the Teague in our board is that like 90%, if not all, of the matches that we're boarding in Teague are low to no wasteland decks um so you can pretty easily fetch for the savannah without him yeah yeah i you can recruit for it and you can vial it in yep um so that's why i'm like fine with the one savannah for the teagues because generally your wastelands are pretty safe in those teague matchups but playing this green card main is a little iffy especially a green black card usually you have access to black but sometimes it might be tough for us to have access to black and green at the same time depending on the kind of lands that we draw but that's why there's only one in the list so we hopefully won't get bit by that too much and we just get to see how cool it is to vial it in one nice thing also is that like with teague your vials are very rarely staying at two they're almost always going up to three and often a vial will stay at three it usually will go up to five eventually but like vials stay on three long enough that like you can just vial in a grist that you randomly draw like at at a reasonable reasonable rate so also last thing even though it's a planeswalker since it's a creature in your hand you don't have to pay the thalia tax and that's cool too so those are all the reasons we're going to try this grist and see how it goes hopefully it doesn't just get boarded out in like every matchup like i do like what happens every time i play a fun card uh i don't like opposition agent mostly because 
Um, I don't know. I, I just never had a good experience with it. It felt like it was always too expensive for what I needed. Um, and a lot containment priest covers a lot of the same grounds that opposition agent does. Um, but comes in in more matchups and think the matchups that you see more often. There are a couple matchups specifically where you would want opposition agent over it. Um, basically, storm and lands, and that's about it. And I just I, I just did not have a good time when I was playing opposition agent. Just holding up three mana is so much. Um, this hand is a bit slow, but it has a vial. These cards could be good. Thoughtseize is pretty, pretty versatile. We'll try it. Underground Sea, huh? What kind of Underground Sea deck are you? So, as always, the general heuristic with Vile versus Thoughtseize is if your opponent is going to do gross things to you on turn one, you should Thoughtseize first. Underground C Pass, unfortunately, doesn't tell us much about what they're doing, but the likelihood that they are doing something gross is high enough that in the blind, I'm going to go with the Thoughtseize. Oh, for a death right, huh? I might have some questions. Okay. Uh Interesting. Cut days days for Bowmasters, what do I care? So, it's definitely, it must just be Bug Beans, um, but their mana is pretty horrible. Um, what do I take here? I guess I just, it's either the Force or the Cut. Um, I think I take the force. If they waste us, then we'll just play. Yeah, I think the cut makes it beans over, over scam. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take the force. If they hold up bowmasters, then I'm just gonna play planes, play vile. Um, if they waste us, then I just play planes and pass. I think a waste here from them is kind of aggressive, but we'll see. All right, deal. Um, but yeah, the nice thing about taking the force is that these dazes are super easy to play around once we cast this vial. Especially if they are missing some land drops. Yeah, it's a pretty pretty wild keep from them, I agree. But I will I will not complain. There they go. I'm gonna laugh if they Oh, they just didn't find a land. Okay. Um So I'm gonna board assuming that it is beans, because I think the cut is what really puts me over on that. Um, so because of that, we start around here, um, usually cutting Thalia's against them. Um, I don't really like Wisp. Don't like GTA. Um, I think that this might have been what I did last time I played against them. But let me double check what my boarding looks like. I do, you know, have a sideboard guide for those. 
I just like to have it around to, ever since I've made it, I've liked using it to just like check what my thinking is at the time that I'm boarding. Oh, I gotta sign in. Uh, um, and the reason I tend to cut Wisp in, not always, but sometimes cut Wisp against Beans is because they are usually so good at just like one for one in you that a lot of times Wisp is just a three one. Okay, my current guide just has me doing this. I think that makes sense. Hey Eli, what's up? How's it going? Uh, yeah, we'll we'll do it. This is not really what I'm looking for against the beans. Yeah, I think we have to mulligan this. And of course, now I can't cast any of my spells. Yeah. Okay, sure. Well, uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, so Legions to Ashes, I originally started playing because, or I thought of it because I was looking for a way to answer all of my opponent's fourth Air Lingus tokens with a single card. I think the more relevant application, honestly, is both against Saga and against Rhinos. Uh, I'm going to get this Vile in play over casting the Bowmaster. Black, green, black, pernicious deed. I was wondering if, they, if that was going to be for a deed. Um, okay, so... That is mostly fine by me. Cabal therapy, huh? All right, what am I naming? <sighs> could be Force of Will. I could name Merktide. Um, I could name Beans, but I think that they maybe they wouldn't have cast it. I'm not sure. I'm going to go for Merktide Regen here. Okay. I missed. But now I know what I'm playing against, so... And their hand doesn't really do a whole lot else, so. <laughs> Rocket ship. Most dangerous gamer. That's a good one. That's a good one. Damn. There's the Misty.
All right, do I think that they kept any of these in their hands? Let's see. Let's see what they do. So they still had the murderous cut. Oh no, they're cast. Oh no, never mind. Sure. Okay. So I'm taking the push, and now they have Edict, Bowmasters, Force. So if I play Teague, they just Edict it. What do I do here? I'm just going to get the Edict out of their hand, I guess. I'm not sure. Opponent's not killing us anytime soon, which helps, but our our next couple draws really need to like not be mopey, and there's a lot of mopey ones they could be. So Oh, are they giving me the opportunity to draw Caracas here? Well they gave me the opportunity, but luckily for them. I guess I'm just giving them the opportunity as bowmasters here to trade with it instead. Oh well. That was probably foolish, but a land isn't really what I wanted to draw here regardless, so. This, oh, is this... Turok. Yeah, okay, their draws have been pretty pretty busto. Uh, I have to remember this. I, I think I'm supposed to board in Battle of Bywater between Torok and um, Murktide. Well, that's something that'll get edicted. I'll do that. Yeah. That's a way to deal with Torok. They might have, they probably have a blue card for four so well on it, but I'm gonna try. All right, they don't need a blue card. They have five lanes. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to cast the Skyclave as a 2-2. Two, two. If 
opponent, you really don't need to be casting this many spells. You can just kill me. Please resolve. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, I guess this shield. There, I guess it's fine either way. Okay, not with the cut. Now with the cut, we're dead, right? Because I'll just... I can plus one, but then they have the edict to get the token out of the way. They are burning clock. Oh, and then they just force anyway. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, so I am going to bring in... I think I'm going to bring in both of these battles because of Turok and um, and the Merc Tides. Uh, what am I cutting for them? Can maybe cut a therapy? I've also been kind of unimpressed with Mom against Bug Beans. It basically always dies, and it's also not great into um, into their post board deeds as well. So I think I'm happy to shave one. Yeah, I think Mom will overall be um, higher impact, or Battle of Bywater will be more higher impact than Mom will for the most part. Oh my god, deck. Give me lands, please. What's happening? Okay, my opponent's also mulling to six, so we're not dead. Okay. My opponent is also mulling to five. I'm gonna put back... Hmm. It's going to be Recruiter, and then the second card is hard. There's, I think, two ways to approach this. It's definitely not the Stoneforge. I think it could be any of the other three cards. Um, I think it's... M so, we could keep Mom Stoneforge, because that's just a really good plan on the play. Um... I can keep thought sees. My only problem with that is that it doesn't really fit into my curve very well unless I also unless I get rid of the mom. So I think it's probably just one of the one drops that I'm getting rid of. Um And I think mom specifically with Stoneforge coming down probably presents more problems for them. Yeah. Okay. At least this time we are both mulling to five. Um, I don't want to get got by a potential wasteland. I know they have them, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get basics. Th this one might get a scrublands, but I'm not gonna get two scrublands. We'll see. Sure. They don't shuffle off the ponder. What do you got for me? Skyclave? Okay. 
yeah, I'm just going to stay safe to Wasteland for now because I want to make sure that this stone, the Cauldra gets into play. Never didn't have it. Um, is a potential argument for sky claving the beanstalk here, but I think that that is just worse than putting in the cauldra. I think we just want to put the pressure on them on a mulligan like this. Thank you. Uh, I would use these in paper if they were in foil, but unfortunately they are not. If I was ever to not, if I was ever to unfoil my deck, these are definitely the planes that I would use. Brainstorm into brainstorm is pretty good for me. They're desperate. They are brainstorm locked. They just said, I think that's GG. Why not foil them? But they're so ugly. Um, I'm just gonna use my mana here and the sky clave the bean. Uh, if I, this is uh, that's also puts lethal on lethal on board too. So, all right, cool. Phew, I thought the mulligan to five was going to get me, but then thankfully my opponent mulliganed with me this time. And yeah, the, 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 the plan worked. Just mom into Stoneforge in a mull to five mirror is a pretty good way to just beat the heck out of them. They are very pretty basics. This, for the record... This is the one that I'm currently using in paper. It's the one that I use in my, I just pulled basics out of my cube um, when I decided to use some old border, old border basics. The Calder check is pretty effective. Nice, I won the die roll this time. Go away. <laughs> um, this hand, uh, Thoughtseize into Thalia is pretty good though, so. Plus the Wasteland, Sash could be good. We'll see what they're playing. I think this is keepable. It's a very annoying six, but it's a keepable six. What do you got going on, opponent? Moto exploding? Got it. Got it. There we go. Uh, they are playing Depths. Okay. Um, I'm just going to get rid of the Reclaimer then, since I don't have removal. And then their hand doesn't really do that much. Yeah.
if I can figure out how to waste this Yavamaya while they don't have the mana up for crop rotation, that's really tempting, but I'm not sure how I get there yet. Um, I think I'm just going to play this vial this turn. curious if they do anything in response to this. Looks like the answer is a yes. Maybe. Okay. So I'll just hold this wasteland then. For now, anyway. It's one of the swamps in the Euroland set. That's your one swamp. Okay, cool. Uh, I I this is I use the same swamp uh, here as I do in paper. Most of my Otis, most of my um uh my cube basics are Odyssey. This is the only one that or not that one, the one that I showed on camera is the only one that's not. So they can turn their stage into a plains. I'm going to get rid of the Avamaya because it is the extra mana from that it gets gives with Dark Depths might matter. I guess they can turn it in, turn the stage into whatever they want, so maybe that doesn't matter, but we'll see. They're at least forcing a lot of stuff to happen that I don't really mind. Um, I'm going to hold up my mana here to use with Sash because I would like to get a nice clock into play. Although, unfortunately, they're about to probably play Maze and hold up Swords, and then I will no longer have a clock, but we'll see. There's the maze. I'll just take the lands out of their yard to keep their creatures small. Unfortunately, this Cauldra's inability to be a card is really hurting us right now. I need something a little cute. Uh, 
uh, giving the making the sash reconfigure forces them to use the swords right now, basically, if they want to use it on the sash. If they choose not to, I can't kill them, but like I can live with that. That's the swords out of their hand, and then they maze us, and I'll live. Yeah, apparently they are going to be all lands. Depths, and they have the stage in play, huh? All right. Um, get rid of the Yavamaya. Get rid of my wasteland, I guess. I'm going to keep Vial on three... They're going for it now. Okay, I think that doesn't really change anything for me. Um, it means Wasteland is no longer a good draw. And Thought Seize was never a good draw because I just drew a lot of lands. Okay, got it. Okay, uh, cards I want here. I want Teague, I want Legions to Ashes, I want Rest in Peace, Containment Priest, and the Battle of Bywaters. Uh, Thalia is bad, as always. Um, don't like Lauren here. I don't really like Batter Skull, and I need one more cut. Um, I guess it's probably going to be the Gta. Um, I guess no, it's going to be the Bowmasters. In fact... Batter Skull is probably more relevant than Bowmasters. I think this looks right. Um, yeah, this is a matchup where I don't really think therapy is good. Um, It can it can it like can be okay, but I think a lot of times you just get to a point where the only cards that are gonna be in their hand are things they can cast in response to it. So Hey Trial, what's up? Uh I don't know. We've played one match with Grist, it got cast, and then got countered. I don't know. Seems really cool, but we'll see if it's actually good. Um well, here are all the lands I wanted in all of my mulligans the past four, the past four hands. Um, what's happening? Uh, sure. Uh, I'm going crazy. <laughs> it's not even just the Cauldra, it's the, I mean, it is the Cauldra, but like three of our five hands have now been mulligans to five or lower. Give me a break. Uh, Solitude is a pretty good draw, but I don't think that I can really afford to use it right now. I'm just going to play this Stone Forge that'll get Swords to Flash Shards. Um, I'm going to get Sash. Oh, so what, Trialeth? I'll just have a different uncastable card in my hand. Foolproof, you say? I'm a little bit skeptical. Okay, let's 
So let's see what you got. Probably gonna like rotate the Caracas into, or maybe the Wastelands. Rotate something into uh, Flagstones. Cast Crop Rotation, sack Flagstones, have a million mana. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Go on. They're, they're thinking. Oh, they have Saga in their deck? Gross. And I hit no cards. All right. That's how it's going to be. Fine. As long as I find something, oh, okay. As long as I find an answer to the stage copy of the saga, I at least have Battle of Bywater to clean up everything so far. But obviously I need to not die before that. Uh, I guess that helps a little bit. Yep, stage becomes a Tayabi Saga. Uh huh, uh huh. case they are about to needle my sash, I'm going to eat the waste out of their graveyard, I guess. I name Krakus. Okay, sure. Okay, well, that's something. It's probably one of our better draws, honestly. Not that complicated. You can just let it resolve, friend opponent. There we go. Okay, and now... Yeah, yeah, I get to attack. I guess there's really nothing I'm afraid of here, right? Um, 
I have the option to waste the stage saga in their upkeep to force them to depths, but I think that is probably not right. Because if they just turn the stage into a planes and then it whiffs, then they just get to wait and draw to more interaction. So I think I'm supposed to just let them get up to let them get up to two here. Oh well, that's really annoying. Um, at least. the sash is going to be able to hold back their construct soon. They are going for a draw step wasteland here. So I guess I just force them to go for depths right now if they want to. I assume they're doing this because they want to make Merit Lage here. Otherwise, it doesn't really make sense. And then when they do that, we just cast the Solitude and we're in great shape. I hold back because it's a f yeah. Mm -hmm. Here they get to make the choice of either making another construct or turning it into a basic. I'm guessing they are doing, yeah, they're doing that, which makes sense. I, yeah, we're going to Solitude. Um, so Wisp is really what we're looking for here. Planes isn't really it, but it's not horrible either. I think I am just getting in for a bunch of damage here. Because I'm kind of just beating them making a construct every turn right now. Crack this food, I guess. Is this Thoughtseize worth casting? Feels like it's probably gotta be. They didn't play a land, so it's spells of some sort. It's just a question of what spells they are. Hmm. 
Well, that's kind of confusing. Hey, hey, Strass Eddie, thank you so much for the raid. How's it going, Harry Carador? How's it going, y'all? Um, so that dies. They targeted me with the endurance. I guess I am. Yeah, I'm getting some of these lands out of my hands, or out of my yard. I think I'm actually getting all of them except for the wastelands I'll keep, and then I'm just going to move Sash over to my solitude. This is lethal every turn. Next turn, I get to attack them for lethal again, and then cast Yorion so that they need to find a flying blocker. Sash is so sick. I love Lion Sash. All right, what do you got? This looks like a Green Sun Zenith for two. Is it for two to get an oof, maybe? Or it could be for uh, Liberator. They don't have Crocus for Yorion. It's named but the Needle. Green Sun for three, so for Knight then? Okay, no, they do. They just get Liberator. Okay. Killing the sash. I can live with that. Um, I'll eat flagstones then, sure. Um, yep. Sash is gone. And then I'll just cast Yorion so that I have an attacker. Um, I won't bother flickering Yorion because it won't matter. Yeah, the dream is unfortunately over, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, feels nice to be at 21 with this board. Recruiter and Wisp kind of like win the game on the spot. Another Solitude isn't that bad either, honestly. Um, I think I'm still just attacking with Yorion, though. Two turn clock. Got removal. The Constructs still can't really attack. Oh, 
Oh, they're making another one? Oh, that's so good for me. Oh my god. Time for Legions of Ashes flavor text to come up. That is such a greedy attack. Oh my god. Maybe they have to, I'm not sure, but I don't know. It just seems a little sketch. Oh, and I get a stone forge. Let's go. We got a reader. I'm sure they're reading this card right now. They have a swords. Swords for the Orion. You got it. Now my stone forge is getting in. I should keep the, the white mana up there. Or the, the planes, because the crocus is just the planes that can get wasted right now. Phew. All right. Uh, nothing changes on the draw. Right? Yeah. Trialeth, no. Go away. We just saw Urza Saga. That was like the only card they played that mattered. They just saga us to death. Until they didn't. Um, this hand works. <sighs> Do I source the plowshares to try out Arbor? The answer is no, I don't. I'm going to play a fetch because I don't want to draw any more lands, so I'll just get a basic. I'll get a planes out of my deck. See, that's what I want of swords. Missed a land drop, huh? I'm still not going to swords the arbor because... Okay, there they go. Look, guys. I know it seems really fun, but instead, I guess I was actually supposed to swords this in response to the Mox Diamonds in case they have um, quick reflexes here, but they don't, so it's fine. <laughs> Again, I'm not, I'm not doing this because they're gonna they're a deck full of lands. They have fast mana, and they're eventually gonna cast their spells, and I want swords to kill the spells that matter. Um, they pitched a wasteland to the Mox Diamond. And I want a second black source if I get wasted the first time. So I'll go for the first scrubland here. I also don't need a Savannah with the Yavamaya out, which is nice. Um, and I'm going for Cauldra. Okay, you got me. I think it's either called or a sash. Could have been sash there. Oh my god. Okay. Maybe now I'll do it. I'll do another upkeep. I'm going to be really upset if that ends up being a mistake again. Oh, they just F6'd. Okay, cool. This will be Sash. And yeah, I'm just putting Sash in now. Okay, deal.
Can you get Skyclave or Wisp for their Mox Diamonds, please? Okay, they have all the Swords to Plowshares. Oh, and they have to play a Sejiri step? That's so gross. Oh no, Needle on Krakus, probably. Needle on Wastelands. Okay. That also makes sense. Um, well, I will play a Mom, now that they've used all their removal. <laughs> and I'll put uh, Yorin in my hands. That was definitely a sword fight. Uh, ooh, and now I get to just play this Yorion to beat him up with Karakas up, and that works for me. The mom was probably enough, honestly, but at least Karakas means we're safe from, like, some crop rotation shenanigans. I don't know what they can even do to... Okay, they just conceded. <laughs> cool. Um, I got the Lion Sash with the second Stone Forge, and then they both got swords. All right, cool. Depths has been defeated. I think it's Poon Slayer, huh? What does that mean? Uh, yeah, I'll keep this. Oh, they GLHF'd me? I'm so dead. I just realized we have another living weapon in our opener. Get out of here. Alright, what combo deck are you on? GLHF, friend. They're on... Black Saga Storm. Got it. Uh, so... Gotta imagine this Beseech just kills us extremely badly if we don't take it, so I'm just going to take that. Yeah. I assume they're going Swamp. Thoughts he's us. Probably taking the Stoneforge. Yep. I have Wasteland for the Saga. Bowmasters to hit them very slowly. I doubt they actually draw any cards. Uh, Recruiter's a nice follow-up. Although I, we need to draw it under the lands to actually cast it. Because there's no way I'm letting them use the Saga for a single second. Root for Thalia. So they clearly have a lot of mana, and the only question is, do they have anything to do with it? I feel like if they did, it would be kind of obvious. So the fact that they are not doing anything gives me a little bit of hope. But every time I say that, they usually then do something. So we'll see. Oh, no, they're passing. OK, we're alive, for now at least. Ancient Team lets them power through the Thalia a little bit, but their deck is not that 
good at it's a lot of zeros and when those zeros turn into ones it gets a bit worse for them so cool you'll love to see it all right, it's actually my first time playing against Black Saga Storm. But I know, let's put it this way, I know I'm boarding in Teagues and Surgicals and Therapies and Rest in Peace and Lauren. And then I think I'm also probably boarding in Battles just so I have a backup against the, um, uh, against them just sagaing me, basically. Um, I think that's where my head is at. Um, I think this is probably a matchup where I cut a planes. I probably want to cut some number of skyclaves. Maybe keep one. I probably don't want the grist, actually. That's probably an easy cut. Um, Man, I have a lot of cards I want to cut here, actually. Uh, I want to cut the GTA. Um, oh, I know I do. Actually, keeping one Solitude as a potential recruiter target for when they go for... Um, either, you know, you'll cheese them with, like, an exact tendrils until it's not an exact tendrils, or it's just, like, a way to re recruit for a free removal spell on a Saga token. Um, that can matter, although it won't matter very often. Um... What else do we got going in? Uh, Mom is not great, um, but Mom is a one mana creature that will get sacrificed to uh, Cabal Therapy. And I think it gets some points for that, honestly. So I think I will go with this. I think this makes sense to me. Thoughtsies and no way to cast it. Rats. Opponents also mulling to six, which is good for us. Another Thoughtsies with no way to cast it. Um, we do have a Surgical and a Lauren and Wastelands, so I'm closer to keeping this hand than I was to the first one. But I don't know if that means I'm keeping it. We have, I think, 17, it's either 17 or 18 black sources, which is not a lot. Definitely unlikely to get it on our first draw step. I think it's like by the third, we're more likely to get it. On a mold of six, the wastelands might be enough. And surgical is our only turn zero hate. Um, so I think that this is a pretty, a very marginal keep but I think it's probably better than going to five. Um, and I think the question is what we're bottoming. It's probably either the Wasteland or the Vile, um, but I think the thing is that we're probably gonna have to use these Wastelands pretty aggressively. Um, and for that reason, I think we need the Vile to make sure that we can actually cast the creatures we draw. So I'm gonna put one of the Wastelands on the bottom. Okay. All right. Um, cross my fingers. Hard to beat a wish claw talisman, but that at least might cut them off the mana. That means that the surgical will get them. We'll see.
Stream, did you know hydraulic jack in Spanish is hydraulic cat? What? in French is French toast. Wild. Childs, I'm... If you just, oh, okay, all right. It's that kind of tip. Got it. It's really in the tank, which feels good for me. There's a swamp. And they're just passing. Okay, so they just sacked their mox opal for nothing. Cool. <gasps> nope. All right. Well, here's the Sather vial. On the bright side, if they couldn't go off before, they are just top decking now. So. Another swamp is fine by me. And here's this is the thing I mentioned this vial makes sure that these creatures will eventually get in play. Oh my god. <laughs> As long as, regardless of whether we draw lands or not. <sighs> I would love to violin Thoughtseize right now. Black Source, Thalia, or Teague. That's what I'm looking for here. Nice. It's a Black Source. Let's go. All right. Goodbye, Beseech. Do I Surgical Beseech? Probably not, right? Probably just waiting for them to go off in a way that uses the graveyard. Uh, vial up to three. Yeah, I'm just gonna thought use them again. Interesting. So if I take push, then they can, I guess it depends what they draw is whether they get to Infernal Tutor. Although I guess they already technically do. So um, so yeah, I'll just take Infernal Tutor and uh, I am going to, this is only during your turn. Okay, so I don't want to wait. I'm just going to. Lauren the Wish Clone now. And they can push Lauren, but whatever. I think the problem is they just don't have any lions, right? They just like all of their like they need more spells because they have all tutors and no mana. So I'm not actually sure what they can do here. Um, I 
a stone forge for Caldra. They might push it, and then I have the Wisp. Another Wish Claw, okay. Another Opal, and then they, then they have the push, okay. Do I Surgical Beseech now? They only have four mana. So now I Surgical Beseech and they can, they don't, they can't cast an Ad Nauseum if it's in their deck. And yeah, I'm pretty sure this, I'm pretty sure this is it. And this will prevent us from, you know, getting to Bowmaster lore in them, but you know, we don't we don't need to do that. It's it is cute, but I'm not even sure. And now we don't even get to see if Adnals is in their deck or not. But hey, I'll take the 2-0 against the Storm deck. Um I would basically would only activate lore in there if it kills them, because I don't want to give them resources to win. They were thinking a lot. They were probably, I don't, maybe they weren't familiar with the deck. I'm not totally sure, but I don't think that they can win through the surgical we have in our hand either way. Um, or so they, they, the ad nauseum potentially can. So, but it depends on like, Probably depends on how they flip, really. Uh, red Splash is fine. Um, I don't think that there are a lot of good Magus matchups. Or let, let me put it this way. Magus is okay against the Beans decks. And it is very good against like the two problematic matchups, one being land, the other being cloud post, which doesn't really cloud post isn't really around that much. I've seen it pick up a little bit because it's good against beans, but like not in any real number. Um, the problem is that most of the beans decks are playing basic planes now, so all of their answers to Magus can be cast through the Magus, um, and. Uh, it just, it just, Magus is very good. It is really good in a few specific matchups, but does not actually cover that much that's being played right now, and not as not very effectively. Um, and I don't think you get a lot out of the sideboard pyroblasts either. If you're if we're talking about like the 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 like hard red splash, um, so that's my take on it. I think there have been times where it's been good. I would not play it right now. Um, yeah, I guess there was that, yeah, I feel like, yeah, because they had the LED in play from turn one, right? Or at least if, from the point that they had the Wish Claw in play, but, um, I think the white version does not interest me very much, um, 
I, I, I think, let's this way. It's better than not playing Legacy. If you can't afford Scrublands, please play Mono White. Play, play Mono White DNT. It's, it's a fun deck. I, I played it for a long time. Um, I think it has some structural issues that I don't think that white cards that exist right now can really solve. Um, and the power behind the black cards has been really uh, good to me. But what's up? Uh, Sand Curve's mom at a stone forward is kind of weak to wasteland, though. Pretty weak against opponent playing creatures. Um, and this Grist isn't really castable, but might be worth just trying. And then if they're on Wasteland, oops, it happens. I think we go for it. The Mom in the Stone Forge Curve is very appealing. Yeah, but like Moon effects are good because you play them quick for the most part. Snow Covered Swamp. I don't know what that means. Could be Scam, I guess, but Scam going Swamp Pass is not that likely. Mom on the draw into any Swamp deck is a little tough because they could have Bowmasters, but thankfully they don't because they forced it pitching Murktide, which is perfectly fine with me. Okay, it's Scam or Shadow, one of the two. Probably Scam, based on getting an Underground Sea. But yeah, uh, the Moon effects generally are good, yeah, because they are fast, not because they completely shut your opponent down and we do not play them fast in fact we often have to get them on like turn four because you have to recruit for them first um and that is not the best place to be okay um let's stoneforge for a cauldra Thankfully, if they like have a grief that they didn't cast yet for some reason, um, and they decide to take our cauldra and cast it, we have the wisp to reset it. So, um, okay. Answer the answer what the grist is doing here. I'm gonna do. I had a big spiel at the beginning of the the um, stream. I won't go over the whole thing. Uh, I Samwise is whatever. It's replacing the Samwise. It's a Planeswalker you can recruit for and vile for, which is pretty, which is just pretty cool. Um, and it is extra removal, which is like always good. We're in a we're, bait, we're a control deck. The plus one also makes cards that fuel, um, that fuel a Cabal Therapy flashbacks. The main problems being we only have one green source in the deck, so you don't often want to draw it. Particularly, you don't want to draw it in wasteland matchups. Um, which is the biggest concern for me. I didn't want to grab Savannah because then that makes my white, my black spells harder to cast if they go after the scrubland. Like I'm basically always on, on oper operating under the assumption that I am getting wastelanded. Let's put it that way. Because more often than not, it's true. I'm not really paying attention. So they ponder, ponder shuffled, 
played underground sea ponder shuffled got it yeah yeah I, in paper that this is still a scarab swarm almost certainly I, it, unless grist blows me away somehow and i decide that it's worth playing in paper then i'll figure out where to actually make room for it um but for now i think it's just going to be the really fun card i play online while i can't play the card that i want to which is another benefit it's a way to put uh, my friend pointed out it's a way to put insect tokens into play while we don't have scarab swarm still Yeah, this is a perfect example of a matchup that, like, I'm not even sure if I want Grist in my deck because she's good. Or I don't know what gender Grist is. I have no idea. Um, reanimate Mother of Runes, huh? Um, but, like, because it's a Wasteland matchup, actually getting Savannah can be really risky. Um, and I'm not sure you would want that over just not ever having to get green mana them getting the mom really confuses me i'm going to cast this flicker wisp i'm not running green sun zenith i only have recruiter like i said i like i said i have one green source in my deck i am not a green deck Well, the Cauldra check so far has been very successful. Uh, Teague for combo and cradle, uh, like natural order combo beanstalk. It's mostly for the beanstalk decks and then happens to hit a bunch of other stuff. Are you getting my wisp here? Wisping my wisping my germ? That's pretty mean. I think I'm casting nothing and just putting in this batter skull. Uh, I think Lavinia is mostly just Gaddic Teague, but worse. Stop wastelanding me. It's the third. Ugh. This is what I was saying earlier about just assume you're getting wastelanded because you almost always are. And it's always a really big deal that you are getting wastelanded. No promises, Trilith. But maybe, we'll see. Well, Screw beats Flood usually, and they're at one card in hand, and I still already have this Batter Skull in play, so I think they're basically looking for Shieldred's Edict or Bust right now, for the most part.
Well, that's a really good one. Um, so I could pro black the germ to force in lethal, um, but I don't really want to do that because. That do I? Let me think. It's basically just Shieldred's Edict, and they would have had to draw it this turn because they would have used it already if they did if they had it. Um, some lists play murderous, or some decks play murderous cut right now, but mostly that's just the Beanstalk decks. Um, I'm going for it. Oh, it could be Brazen Borrower. That's the other thing I should be I should be thinking about right now. It again would have to be a card they top decked though. And they do. Okay, sure. But we get to resolve to save the vial. Um and the long term of this game is still looking pretty good for us, because they are still at only three. And we're about to be casting getting all these cards into play eventually, so. Um, yeah, annoying for them to top deck that, but that's how it goes. If I... They could have bounced the skull any... Oh my god. They could have bounced the skull anyway. Um, but that would mean that we could easily put it back into play with the Stoneforge. So now we're going to six... Probably be attacking with the Stone Forge. Actually, I think holding back might be a mistake. Um, so we're going to six. We at least get to vial in the Bowmasters to only go to three next turn. And if we draw a land, then we could potentially get something with the Stone Forge. What do we got? Okay, Solitude is a very good draw. That's like exactly what I was looking for. Um, I'm going to activate this vial now. Um, and I want to Bowmaster the Borrower, and then I'm going to Solitude the Flicker Wisp. All right, so now I'll get in these attacks that I already should have been getting in, but. Um, and then I'm going to Solitude in their upkeep. So yeah, they should maybe actually just be dead here if I was doing this right. Um, I think the Stone Forge is the card that's least likely to do anything. works for me. And they concede. All right, cool. We're alive. 
It's a little bit stressful, but we made it. Um, so we have some pretty good cards to bring in here. Uh, it's all these, and then we cut these. Goodbye. Um, we'll keep Ingrist for now. We'll see if we ever get to cast it. Hopefully, the getting the Savannah to eventually cast the Grist is a lot more possible when our mana is more stable than it was that game. So, no thanks, Trilith. I'm good. This hand can definitely cast a Grist. That much is for sure. <laughs> um, it might be too slow on the draw against Scam. It doesn't have any removal. Um, I am going to try it. If it was 10k, it would happen way too often, though. I will lower it, but 10k is too low. Just swamp pass again? All right. It's fine by me. Didn't really want another land. Probably leaving up Bowmasters here, which is fine because I am certainly not playing into it. Um, I'm getting stifled, literally, whatever. <laughs> literally, whatever. Um, I'll play Vista here. That's like so fine with this hand. I I don't care. It's been so many stifles around. I don't really understand why. I guess make it one 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 one. That might have been seven ones. I meant six if I said seven of them. Goodbye, troll. Maybe they have a force. See, so you joke, but I did put Yorion in my main deck once. I also had one in the sideboard, but I played one in the main and the side. And then I trophied. This is just hard cast grief, probably. No, Murktide maybe? Yeah, Murktide. Yeah, Murktide. Okay. Only a 5-5. Five, five. Interesting.
I think that I am just casting Stoneforge here. Stoneforge for Skull, maybe? I could also get Sash just to pitch the Solitude. I don't hate that on this board, honestly. Um... Uh, yeah, if Lur I have a copy of Luris ready to go into my deck if it ever gets unbanned but can't be a companion. I am guessing that will never happen. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I just want the extra white card here. Is that crazy? I'm thinking about this way too hard, I think. I guess I don't really want to pitch Sash, do I? I guess Sash is... Okay, I'm gonna go for Sash, and I think I'm gonna actually pitch the Wisp here and just get rid of the Merktide. I don't want to bother taking damage from it. All right, cool. Sash keeps us safe for any further reanimates. We'll keep their graveyard clear from um, for future Merc Tides, things like that. Push the Mystic. Yeah, that's fine. Powder Keg. Interesting. The Wisp probably is the worst card in their hand. I don't I don't know why I was so I don't know why I was thinking the Wisp was good, but I am going to fetch the swamp here. Probably want to save Grist until there's actually something to answer with it. Um, so I am just going to open on the Sash, I believe. Yeah. Uh, they kill Grist with Shieldred's Edict. I agree. first time I've had to think about the fact that that card kills Planeswalkers. Yeah, I was thinking about that, Jason. Um, I decided against it, and I don't really remember why. But now I'm just going to untap. I'm going to cast one mom into this powder keg. We'll see if they crack it. Nope, they went up to two. I think that, I think that is probably correct, which is fine by me. Um, I am going to eat some spells out of, I guess at least one spell out of their yard. Um, I think I'm going to not eat a second. The 
this looks like a merc. That's oh, a plague engineer. Well, that's mean. Sure. Let's see what you got. Dress down, brazen borrower days. I think I just want to get rid of the brazen borrower. Yeah. Uh, maybe that was a turn to cast Grist, actually. It was basically just plussing to block the Plague Engineer for a while. It's probably good enough. This puts Ponder on top of their deck. Okay. Kristen. Okay. Cool. All right, just don't draw Bowmasters, please. All right, well, that was cool. Definitely forgot they put a ponder on top. They shuffled off the ponder. Here's the sanctuary, probably putting a ponder back on top. Yep. really BM. All right. All right, what do we mill? We mill a recruiter. Damn, I wanted that. Um could maybe waste the sanctuary here to make sure they can't daze it back again later, but I guess I'm not casting a spell yet, so I can wait. Shuffled off the ponder again. Goodbye, Grist. I knew you for two turns. <laughs> Let's 
All right, I'm just gonna make sure that they can't daze this back. Okay, I have so many good draws. I just need to hit one of them. Uh oh, that's a bowmaster, isn't it? That's oh, a brazen bar. Okay, that's worse. Basically need solitude. Uh, swords buys us a turn. Sol solitude is the one that stabilizes us on its own. Um, swords buys us a turn. Wisp buys us a turn. Skyclave buys us a turn. Recruiter also stabilizes. And we draw another. Okay, cool. Um, oh, Battle of Bywater also would have been a banger there. Okay. Keep it as is. Yeah, I think that's just uh, my opponent pondering into me top decking lands was is is a bad time for me drawing to, for me to be drawing lands, unfortunately. Yep, they're on blue black scam. Looks like a pretty standard build of it. Uh, this hand's great. Yeah, okay. Uh, I am going to lead on Wasteland Vial to see if my opponent is more inclined to force or waste it. I think if they're forcing it, they're forcing it either way. Um, and this might get, make them waste kind of aggressively, and I'd rather they hit my Wasteland than my colored sources, because I am not wasting them anytime soon. So Underground C Ponder, and they do not shuffle. Okay. Looks like this is probably not a game where I will be uh, fetching basics. Powder cake again? Yeah, sure. Does nothing against this hand. Hmm. Okay, this is a lot of wastelands. We're going for this. My hand's also playing super patiently anyway. Um, so. Um, I don't think I necessarily like that toast because they if I if I let them do that then there's a pretty it's pretty easy for them to just cast a Merktide that turn and we have an answer for it but like I think the goal is to slow them down as much as we can um, so that we can get as much value out of these cards as we can so But yeah, I think just keeping them off of a casting a Mark Tide there is right. I don't think it's totally ridiculous. I, I think your your suggestion definitely makes some amount of sense. I just prefer going in there than then in there. Sure. Uh, 
Um, I don't really care about the. I don't really care about any of these, but the fewer bowmasters they cast, the harder it's going to be for them to kill me. So. Keeping Powder Keg at 2. That sort of makes sense. I assume they're wasting my Scrubland here. Yep, okay. Um... I could commit to cracking these to put Yorion in my hands, but I think I don't want to do that, mostly because of grief. I, know. I, I think it's mostly because of grief, secondarily because I would rather um, wait to draw more lands before I commit to what I'm fetching. Um, so there's the Bowmaster. Um, I'm, there's a decent chance I'm going to Swords one of these, but we'll see. Probably gonna wait till end step to do it. I guess if I'm waiting till end step, I might as well just take a draw step first, because I'd much rather answer them with something like a my own bowmaster. Or, yeah, this is also fine. Um, I am going to get a swamp with this because that means this marsh flats can still get a savanna for a um, for a potential uh, grist that we draw. Um, and since I'm pretty low on mana and I know they have a push, I'm just going for sash. Maybe I was supposed to take the push earlier so that they would have to crack the keg to answer something like a stone forge. Probably something worth thinking about. Uh, what is this? Plague engineer. Sure. That doesn't really matter. I'm going to name cat. I bet they're going to name cat here. Maybe not. Maybe they name elemental human. They do name cat. All right. All right. You hit me for two. Um, now, do I play around days? I probably can't afford to, so I am just going to swords the plague engineer here. Right, they can crack the keg if they want to, but that also kills their bowmaster, and then they're just attacking with a 1 1. So I could read a second Bowmaster here, uh, 
but they also could just be attacking because of the keg. I think I think this is the safest block because if it is a second bowmaster and they're using that to kill the sash, um, then I'm gonna want there to be an army token in play for me to get with the wisp. So I'm gonna block like this. Okay, it is another bowmaster. So. Orc army's out of there. Um, they can tick the keg up to three to kill the wisp, but then they're still just attacking with the bowmaster and nothing else. I'm going to cast the recruiter next turn to get a stone forge. Probably a stone forge, almost certainly a stone forge on this board. Now I also get to play around days still. Sure. Okay. These stifles, I swear. Did you draw the fourth? Okay. I was going to say, did you draw the fourth Bowmaster? I'm going to lose it. It's kind of like the fourth Bowmasters. I would really like a land to cast this Solitude, please. Deal. Okay. I guess. And knowing that they drew the wasteland, so they forced me to cast it now. But I am about to put Yorion in my hand. And I have a sword, so that's even better. Okay, awesome. Uh, so I could Swords Bowmaster, and then the Solitude can also just attack. I don't know if that's better though than just having the swords for the borrower instead of having the having to make sure the Yorion resolves to remove it. Um, I think I am actually just gonna cast Vile and then Swords the Yeah, Swords the Borrower when they cast it. I can attack here. I don't think that I want to maybe I do actually if they trade, that's actually probably fine for me because I still have the Battle of Bywater and the Swords, and this means that I'm getting my life gain in before they draw like a Shield or Edict. Yeah, I'm gonna do this attack. Yeah, they didn't even block. That's that's good for me too. Yep, that resolves. Goodbye. Um, I think now I'm probably not attacking. Yeah. Oh, I'm probably getting probably getting griefed now. Yeah, okay. Take the Orion. 
leave me with the battle. Deal. Um, eh, no, I'll just I'll just play mom. Play mom and pass. Definitely playing to clock here a little bit because my opponent is almost out of it. I'll start with an attack here. Okay, cool. Swords of Grief. Your turn. I think my opponent's in a bad spot regardless of the clock, but I don't think there's like any way that they're winning through the clock. Yep, and they concede. All right, cool. Well, we've at least somewhat broken our spell. We've been like a lot of two threes and three twos the past couple weeks, um, but now we're playing for the trophy. So let's see if we can uh, let's see if we can lock it up. Trialith, don't say a single word. I see you typing right now. Trialith isn't there. <laughs> um, yeah, I upload all of my bots to YouTube. Uh, hey, thanks for the follow. But yeah, I export them all to YouTube like right away. Um, so you can type exclamation point YouTube to get a link to my channel, subscribe to it. All the bots end up there in the next in like a day or two. <laughs> no, make it don't. No, spare me. <laughs> I haven't been paired yet. Please don't say it. Did that command get cleared? Well, that's annoying. Uh, one second. I'll uh, put the link in chat real quick. There you go. All right, we're on the play against something. Uh, yeah, I'll keep this. Um, on the play in the blinds, uh, I lean towards Thoughtseize just in case they're doing something gross. We'll see. Well, that's kind of gross. Um, I have, this is the first time I've played against eight cast in like months. So what are we doing here? Um, interesting. So if I take the Lotus Petal, they can't cast a patchwork on turn one. Because they can only they can cast seat they can play seat cast mox opal but they don't have metal craft so they can't cast anything. Um, I can then potentially the next turn cast my vial waste the seat and put them in the same position again. Um, and I think that against eight cast I just need to make them stumble and give me enough time. So. As weird as it feels to take this Lotus Petal, I think it might be right. Yeah, let's go for it.
this is definitely a big matchup for Battle of Bywater. Let's cast this vial. Hopefully it resolves. Hopefully I didn't draw a blue card. Okay, cool. And yeah, we're uh, we're slowing you down. Crossing our fingers that we draw another land at some point, obviously. Um, but let's see what happens. There's seat again. Spell bomb. So now they can play the Mox Opal. Uh, but they can't. Okay. All right. That's fine. That's fine. Uh oh. Spellbomb is kind of an annoying draw from them too, because. Uh, okay, there's Islands. Now they can cast Patchwork and then cast the Mox Opal. Still only casting one Patchwork this turn, at least. Land? Not a land. Maybe one of our better non-lands, but still. Not great. Ward 2 is just Ward Infinity. Ugh, and now they draw the Urza Saga. Gross. So here's the second patchwork that goes up to 3-3. Three, three. Uh, this gives me an opening, potentially. Ooh, this this might be really good. I need to draw a land, desperately. Um, unbanned faithless looting. Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Um, yeah. So what we can do here is activate vile, get stone forge, get cauldra. Draw a land, please. I'm begging you. <sighs> okay. Well, never mind. Well, we still do this part at least. We still get the spell bomb out of here so that our living weapons are safe, but wow, we really needed to draw a land in any of these draw steps. There's at least a chance that we're going to get to trade with the first, with the smaller patchwork with the Skyclave here. Or at least, you know, if they're not going to offer the trade, but it will at least not be able to attack. Maybe. Looking a bit less likely now. Yeah, okay. Probably chumping with it now. Yeah, man, if we could put a cauldron into play here, it'd be so much better. Now that we didn't, I'm not even sure that we have like a realistic out. since they're going to be sagaing us now also. Keeping this at three. All right, we're getting somewhere. Just barely, but we're getting somewhere. Um, yeah, I'll pass. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, 
Um, I don't recall if eight cast plays needle main. It's been too long, but I just have to assume that they do because if I can't do any part of this, then I am extremely dead. So. Honestly, even if they have needle, it might not be enough. I might not have enough to, to get through it after this. Yeah, so they do have the needle. If they're smart, they name vile. I assume they will. And then we might just be too restricted on mana, but we'll see. Yep, and there's the vile. Um, or needle on vile. We at least get to put in this batter skull. Maybe that's enough. No, okay, not into this kappa. I don't like playing against eight cast at all. This matchup's miserable. Um, I think I just have to wait and put in the batter skull. See, the problem with Kataki is that they have enough mana in play to save all of the cards that are killing me. That's why I have never been a Kataki believer. Is this Chalice on two? Sure is Chalice on two. All right. Attack me with everything. It's going to be fine, I swear. Okay. Let's put in this batter skull, and then what do these blocks look like? So, blocking, probably blocking like this. And that leaves, yeah, this leaves me at exactly one life. So I, yeah, I have to block like this. Um, I guess the other option is I could swap the Cauldra and the Wisp. Because if I kill, if I kill the Patchwork, then I could recruit for a Solitude to kill this without having to pay any ward costs. But like, I'm almost certainly dead to the Kappa either way. But I think I will do that. I will make that swap. They also have the force of will. So yeah, of course they're going to force my solitude anyway. Or the recruiter, either one.
Okay. Didn't expect that to work, but here we are. So now we just need their last card in hand to not be a an artifact. But if it's not an artifact and it's not a blue card, then what could it possibly be? <laughs> We're safe to Ancient Tomb. Okay, we're alive. We are just barely alive. But I'm still not sure how we're stabilizing is the real problem. Uh, oh, I forgot to play this land last turn. I could potentially move the skull over to the Cauldra, and that probably would be a way to stabilize, but I goofed. Um... We might still be okay, though. Well, I guess, no, because the... Yeah, okay. I might not be okay, but... I have an idea. Because I can soar... Even if they find an artifact... I guess... Alright, I'm just, I'm just passing. All oh, right, chalice on one. Swords doesn't do anything. Yeah, never mind. So yeah, if I had if I had not forgotten to play this land, then we might actually be able to get out of this. Um, now we have to dodge them playing an artifact this turn, and we successfully dodged it somehow. So Yorion should really be in my hand here, which might come up. We'll see. Make sure I'm doing the right. I'm equipping my batter skull to the culture germ. Yeah, okay. Doing this right. This is a way to beat a resolved Kappa cannon here, although it certainly isn't one that I expected to be doing. Um, so, yeah, really, we should have been able to do this last turn also and be at 22, at which point I think the game would be over because we already got rid of their Mishra's Bauble, um, which is the main reason I'm doing this, is they, they, they don't have Bauble, and that's, like, their one answer to this main board. But apparently they're just ripping blanks. Or Spellbomb, yeah, Spellbomb, not Bauble. Whatever that card is. I'm gonna start with the Stone Forge actually. Let's see if I get Oh right, they have Chalice, never mind. Duh. They don't have to counter anything. I thought about that like two turns ago and then forgot this one for some reason. Oh well. There's just so many permanents on the board, right? If we win this game one, it was just meant to be. Okay, we, we got it. All right, this this might just be meant to be. We'll see. Um, God, I have not played against eight cast in eons. I know that I'm cutting the moms and I'm pretty sure I'm cutting the Thalias and then I'm boarding in legions to ashes. These battle of Bywaters are gonna be huge. Uh, and then what else? Probably 
think, yeah, I have two therapy in my boarding right now. And I think this makes sense. Therapy is just fast interaction. You need it against them. Um, and I think this will be it. Maybe I want to follow you over a Jite. Jite is not really good in this matchup. It's just so expensive and all their stuff is so big. Or just board out them both and play the third therapy. That's another possibility. I'm going to try that. Uh, it, yeah, T gets all X spells, everything CMC four or more also, and non, non creature X spells. So it'll get Chalice. Basically, it counters Chalice, Force of Will, and Thought Cast, and that's about it. This hand is the best card in the matchup, aside from maybe Battle of Bywater, so I'm, I'm keeping this. Um, oh no, it is, sorry, it is all X spells, not just non-creatures, so it would counter like Ballista, for example. Or not counter, it will make Ballista not able to be cast. This is a Chalice on one, that's really messed up. It's non-creature spells of four CMC or more, it is all X spells. We can look at it. Or no, no, sorry, it is. Never mind. I'm no, I'm crazy. Just kidding. Trial is right. I'm done. I can't wasteland that as much as I would like to. I have to save it for sagas. I'm thinking of um, I'm mixing part of it up with Lavinia, I think, because Lavinia's you counter spells with that they spent no mana on doesn't care about whether it's non creature or not, right? Hi, Patchwork. How's it going? Yeah, okay. That, I think I think that is what I'm thinking of then. Or I'm just going totally crazy, who knows. Uh what is this? This is another chalice on one? Okay. Well, that ruins some of my plans. That doesn't. That's a great one. Um, I'm just going to get a Cauldra so I can block this patchwork. Is this a Chalice on two? We're doing this again, huh? All right. <laughs> you got it. You've hit me for five, and now you can't attack anymore. Yeah, I th also think we are fine. Um, it's just kind of funny.
and we have solitude. That's even better. Um, yeah, I, I'm just going to start taking out all this nonsense. Go for the chalices on one. Keep the one on two because it's going to stop their patchworks from being draws. Um, and I'm going to balance Lauren right now. Yeah. Uh, I did win game one. <laughs> it involved a uh, it involved a cauldra getting a batter skull on it. I was way behind, and then whoops, and then they just like drew super dead or something. I don't know. The best guess is they were locked under their own chalices and couldn't actually cast a spell to make their. Um, um uh words to make their kappa unblockable speaking of kappa oh it's odawara okay sure um yeah i'm going to chump block here And now we get to Lauren the patchwork, paying for the ward cost. I have a second wasteland, so their sagas are going nowhere fast. I'm gonna get a savannah off this in case we draw grist. Feeling great. Um, I don't care that much about them getting to cast a spell bomb. Um, they only have one in the deck, and they're more likely to be getting it off of a saga than they are to draw into it. doing here yeah I'm gonna um, Lauren them again and then thoughts use and then I guess also cast the vial and they have conceded That was certainly a way to beat a cast. I don't like going after lands. They have enough mana to cast. Like they they have enough mana to cast anything they need to. The um, uh, thought monitors are free. Thought casts are free. They have enough artifacts for Kappa. They can't cast their two drops because of the chalice. Um, but none of that matters because I. I yeah okay that was that was a really sick match win all right I'm taking that home that's for sure uh whew, that game one was sick that game two was cool too uh, it was nice that like you know eight cast doesn't usually peter out like that but like usually they put a big threat in play and it's still a problem and it kind of was um but we just knew exactly how to dismantle them so I have bad news squad we didn't recruit for grist and we didn't violin grist so i don't know but it was buh. it was worse than sam in that one match we played against scam where we just never drew a land um but it mattered elsewhere I don't know, it seems cool. I'm not I'm not taking it out. And yeah, this list is gonna get published with Chris and I'm gonna get some questions now. Um, so that's cool. Uh 
I don't know. That was that was that was the. I feel after a few too many nights of frustrating losses, I'm glad I got some really cool wins because I had been I had been missing those. It kind of been like the wins just like happens, just like I did stuff and then my opponent lost. But I felt like I had to work for a lot of these wins, which I, which is the part of Magic I like. That's why I play this deck because it has to has to work for most of its wins. That's where the fun is for me. Um, all right, well, uh, I guess I'm going to be getting some questions about the Grist, huh? Well, uh, thank you all for watching me play some pretty sick games of Magic. Um, give me one moment to see if we are going to raid anybody. Looks like probably not. Yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna head out. Yeah, Grist OP can't lose. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody. Uh, real quick set of, set of announcements for people I haven't seen before. Uh, I run a Patreon. I have for the past year ish. Um, I just made a put a whole bunch of new stuff, new benefits up there, uh, including a Discord for all my subs. And at the $5 tier, you can get an access to my recommended list along with the sideboard guide that I'm going to keep up updated at least monthly, if not more than that. Um, this card here, Cabal Therapy, is sick. And I wrote an article all about why I put it in DNT, kind of like the, the story behind how it ended up here, um, what the ideas are behind it, things like that. Um, I also, if even if you don't pay me any money, you can go look at a bunch of my previous articles that are like about, you know, uh, structurally things about DNT that people I don't think understand as well about how, you know, it's a control deck, it's not an aggro deck, just because it's creatures doesn't mean it's aggro. Bunch of matchup primers, things like that. Um, I, yeah, I think that's, that's it. My Patreon's cool, uh, exclamation point. Patreon for a link. There you go. Um, until next time, which will be this Sunday in about 72 hours, uh, thank you everybody for watching me, and I will see you next time.